Got it. Okay. And then yeah. during that, and then at some point you got into battle rap because that's pretty much how Mike told me that he met you. But yeah. I, I don't know if you guys, what was the story there? Like, did you guys, how nah, did you me guys meet? Mike, so the battle rap shit happened before I met Mike because that's kind of how the ions rolled around. We was, I mean, we didn't really have music available because music was really expensive to record at the time. Yeah, that's right. And to manufacture. This is not no push two buttons and it's yeah, on no, Spotify. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? This isn't Pro Tools back then. It no. was $200 for a roll two-inch tape. I that mean, part. It, it, you're, that, that part. If you can't come out the pocket, you're not recording that shit. That part. So we really built our name around battling. So um, in high school, I met this guy that was kind of working with this group that we low-key had rap beef with. Not real beef, but rap beef. And his name was Spontaneous. <laughs> what? Yes. So Spontaneous is a Grammy-nominated producer that um, was, 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 was God at the time. Um, 97, 98, he was God at the time um, because he had a record deal and he was touring with Talib Kweli and Most Def, and he was like on the Lyricist Lounge tour. Um, this is before the Grammy now. Yeah, for, for those of you that don't know, look up Spontaneous Spur of the Moment music. He was the very first artist signed to Good Vibe Recordings. This is a record label that had Bahamadia and Medusa, Planet Asia, Planet Asia a yeah. bunch of other artists. And his story is insane. I mean, his first album had DJ Revolution and fucking Exhibit and Socrates. And Rock from Hell to Skelter. Rock from Hell to yeah. Skelter. This, this is in 2000. And his story is just insane. Yeah, I mean, so he, he had a record I, deal. I had no idea that you had, you yeah, had yeah, issues with he him. Had so a record. Well, I didn't have issues with him. I had issues with his crew. Yeah. And his crew was called Cobra Kai. Yes. That was his squad? Yes. I knew we produced for them. I didn't know. Uh, that was his, no, his go squad ahead, at the time. So... Um, Sir Vice, whose name was Fat Cat at the time, rest in peace, he passed away in 2013. Um, Animosity, J. Scott, and Mice Montana. These were all guys that were in our age bracket that um, were running around with him. He was kind of like they big homie. And because of all the shit he was doing in the industry, they was on some like, you know, we kind of want to get rid of all the competition kind of shit, like let's battle. So the first real battle that I had was at, and the homegirl cat is going to fucking kill me for this, but the homegirl cat, she's like, cat is an amazing human being. She, um, she's a poet. She, um, has a, um, she had a nonprofit called Say Word that was dedicated 100% to kind of like teaching children how to write poetry, how to perform poetry. She's an amazing, amazing artist. She's one of the best, she's one of the best writers that I know. Um, she used to work at a spot called Mr. Rags, which was an urban apparel store. It, it was rare out where we was at, um, but it was an urban apparel store. They used to play hip hop, sell Mecca shirts, Pelly Pell fucking hoodies. You know what I mean? That type of shit. Oh, so it was kind of like the basement in Sherman Oaks, but no, no, no. But it was just a record. It was just a clothing store, though. Oh, it's not a record store. store. It was yeah. just a clothing store. So we had met up with Cobra Kai at that store to battle, and it was me. I want to say J.O. and Chaos, and it was um, Animosity, um, J. Scott, and at the time, Fat Cag, who turned into Sir Vice, um, and we battled at the store. And there wasn't like a clear-cut winner, like we just battled, but it was it had ended whatever tensions we had, because it was like, all right, we respect y'all, y'all respect us, it's all love, and we've been cool ever since. But um, that was like my first battle. And then my senior year, I had went to, so Ragman and Method Man was really getting big in the skate community at the time. Oh, yeah. And out here in San Bernardino, they had a huge festival that was called the Ragman and Method Man Skate Jam. And I went with Chaos, of all people. And... We there was a battle on some side stage, and it was it was a decent. I mean, at the time, it was a great size side stage. I mean, shit, there was probably like two thousand, three thousand people at this side stage. So, at the time, I had never battled on stage ever, and um, Chaos signed me up without me knowing. That's fucked up. Yeah. 
So, and I, and I appreciate him for this. I keep it a hundred with you. Cause if, if that never happened, I don't know if I ever would have started battling. Um, I went up there and I got cooked. Like I got fucking cooked. Like I can't even front. Um, I didn't understand what mic control was. I was cuffing the mic cause that's kind of what I seen on TV and shit. Um, and I got cooked. Um, I got booed. Um, because they couldn't hear me and I was arrogant beyond comprehension and didn't quite know what um, battle rap really was. And so that sparked something in me. Um, and I had always said, like, yo, if this basketball shit don't work out, then I'm going to, I'm going to pursue music, you know, seriously. Full and yeah, full time and seriously. And. I'm gonna use battle rap as a as a platform to kind of springboard my name. So I started, you know, just practicing freestyling, you know, in the car, freestyling in the shower, freestyling everywhere I could go, and then I kind of built up my skills. And then later on, I graduated in 2000, and that's when I really decided to take music serious. And um, that's when I started just running around to different spots, like. Foundation, Elements, Project Blowed. Um, I'd been to a couple of these spots before, but never went and actually rapped. I just would go and spectate. Um, and then, you know, I got a lot better. And then when I stepped out as a grown man at that point, at 18, um, I was a problem at that point. Got a click full of shooters, mm -hmm. 